So for the past year, I have been hearing that Nate, Nate, what's going on? Since you moved to that new studio, you're blue. Whether it's your skin, whether it's whatever, get better at editing, buy more lights, do something about it. Well, folks, I literally mean it this time. Let there be light. No, seriously. If this isn't fixed now, then I don't know what to do. I have a workman light from my garage flashing me so hardcore right now that I am quite literally blind and can't see the screen. Let's get into the news. Hey everyone, welcome back to Prime News and our first story deals with Nintendo's game vouchers. Now, they announced this uh, about a month or two ago that they were going to be doing these $99 game vouchers that let you buy two games digitally uh, that are either out already or coming out in the future. Breath of the Wild, as an example, is one from the past. In the future would be something like Luigi's Mansion 3. And so what you the whole point of the vouchers, I guess, to buy digitally isn't to maybe buy Breath of the Wild, which you can actually find cheaper on Amazon physically, but it would be for something like Fire Emblem Three Houses that just came out, Pokemon games in the future, Luigi's Mansion 3, maybe Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3, something like that where you can get two Nintendo-published games uh, that cost $60 for 50 digitally. This basically would save you about 20 bucks over two games if you took smart advantage of the game vouchers while well, they come to an end in two days. Now, Nintendo did tell us they were always going to be temporary. It kind of sucks that these game vouchers are temporary, but I wanted to remind you guys that, hey, look, you got a couple days left to still get them. You can buy as many of them as you would like. Uh, again, they're only announced on game, you know, to be viable on games through this year. Who knows? Maybe uh, Animal Crossing or something next year might be included. But for now, it is what it is. Uh, get those game vouchers if you're interested in having that digital library of AAA Nintendo goodness. New Super's Lucky Tail is coming to Nintendo Switch. We actually knew about this back during E3, and Eric and I both got to go hands-on with the game. And needless to say, it's very good with a ton of improvements over the original experience. But it's not just improvements. As one of the developers that was there was talking to us, it's actually a new game. It is not the same Super Lucky Tale you got to play over on Xbox and PC. This is a brand new experience purpose built for Nintendo Switch. In fact, the name of it, New Super Lucky Tale, New Super's Lucky Tale, uh, that came from Nintendo. They didn't know what to name it. They were talking to Nintendo. Nintendo was like, hey, why not throw new on the front? I mean, Nintendo does that all the time. As I said, don't be surprised if a Switch Pro comes someday and it's just called a new Nintendo Switch. I mean, new 3DS, new... Anyways, we know how Nintendo does things. So the name for this game came from Nintendo in the first place. And honestly, it's a really great experience. If you enjoy uh, those old school N64 type 3D platformers like Mario 64, Banjo-Kazooie. Yes, we've had Ukulele. This is another game in that style. However, just like a, a, a single character, not like the dual character stuff like Ukulele is. And it's really, really good from what I played. Lots of collectibles, all that stuff. It's a lot of fun to play. It's a treat, honestly. If you enjoyed the original Super Lucky Sale, you're going to enjoy this one. And uh, if you're looking for a new uh, experience in this world, maybe uh, a semi-sequel, a 1.5, a 2.0, whatever, this is that as well. It's really, really fun. And uh, yeah, I'll just put a link down in the description if you're interested in pre-ordering it because it's, it's good. It's just a good game. Sega's Mega Drive Mini, which was slated to come out on September 19th, has now been delayed to October Fourth. This is just because, well, they need more time to get enough of them made and, and do it right. They don't want to rush the launch of this and maybe end up with a PlayStation Classic thing where it just kind of sucked. Impressions on the Mega Drive Mini coming out of E3 because it was playable there is that it's actually pretty good. And it's got a great lineup of games. And uh, we're really only mentioning it even though it's Sega because, hey, look... Everyone's copying this Nintendo Classic thing, although I guess Sega's been doing it for a while, just with like AT80 -AT games, and, and like those people make really crappy versions of the Sega system. So I don't know. We'll have to wait and see how this turns out once it's actually public and not just demo units. But from what I experienced at E3, it was pretty solid. Uh, the, the emulation was pretty, uh, pretty much there where you would expect it to be in 2019. So uh, again, it's been delayed to October 4th. If you've already pre-ordered it, uh, your pre-order will be... Uh, you know held and kept for the october 4th date uh, if there are some available to pre-order i'll put links down in the description if they're not sold out uh, i'm guessing they're probably sold out for launch but uh who knows i mean it, nes classic and snes classic were more popular platforms than like the mega drive sega genesis so uh just something to consider but there's a lot of great games on it that have never been on nintendo platforms before so uh hey why not check it out uh, this holiday if you happen to see one on store shelves tomorrow there is a super smash bros ultimate presentation 
for Hero. Uh, this was announced by the Nintendo vs. Twitter account, which is the official uh, competition Twitter account uh, for Nintendo. And they're basically doing a Nintendo Direct-style gameplay demo-esque presentation tomorrow for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate at 8 a.m. Central Standard Time. I'm hoping to live stream it, although no promises right now. That being said, uh, it'll be 22 minutes long, and it's going to be all about Hero, and it's going to include the release date for Hero. But we might already know what that release date is, because a deleted tweet from Nintendo of Europe kind of did an oopsie. There is a major Smash Bros. update, according to the tweet, which you're seeing on screen right now, uh, coming on the 31st. First, and that update likely includes Hero. So it would make a lot of sense. They're announced it tomorrow, comes out the next day, same day as a major Smash update. That update's been deleted off of Twitter, which means, whoops, we weren't supposed to say that yet. We should have waited till tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, it's probably coming in two days. Uh, not a surprise. It was supposed to be a summer DLC as is. This also means now that we basically know when Hero is coming, uh, that we can now start to ask, hey, when are we getting Banjo Kazooie? When's that coming this fall? We don't know. But uh, that's next. So that's when I'm finally buying that Fighter Pass is uh, when Banjo-Kazooie gets a release date. So We now have some Fire Emblem Three Houses launch numbers, well, for the UK. This will probably be an ongoing story this week as information comes in from the MPD data or we get information in uh, from Japan, which usually comes out on Wednesdays. Uh, but for the UK, Fire Emblem Three Houses is not only the number one selling game for the week, that's not a really a big surprise. It's how many units it sold. Now, we don't get exact figures, but we do get comparison data. It sold twice as many copies as Fire Emblem Awakening did in the UK, and it sold more than twice as many copies as Fire Emblem Fates. So two of the last major releases in Fire Emblem, it has massively doubled up or more of those sales. That lets you know Fire Emblem Three Houses is trending in a direction that might lead to the best-selling game in franchise history, at least in the UK. We'll have to wait for those Japan and uh, you know North American numbers to come in to get a grander picture on everything, and I realize that's not the entire world. There's much more countries than just like, you know, those three or four. But it's still worth noting that these are where a lot of the sales do occur for these games. And uh, if they trend really well in Japan and North America and UK, then it's obviously going to be trending everywhere else pretty well too. So Final Emblem Three Houses, it's tied with Super Mario Maker. Uh, it's in the top six games right now, tied with Super Mario Maker 2 uh, for top rated games of this year. Uh, definitely a game of the year candidate at this point. And uh, yeah, it's it's phenomenal. I know some of you guys are playing it right now. Mark Greenberg, shout out to you. He's been like chiming in on live streams or in comment sections every time Fire Emblem Three Houses is brought up that it is his game of the year. Uh, and hey, look, you know I haven't played it yet, so I can't comment on that front. I know what's wrong with me. I get it. It's on my to buy list. It'll come down the line. Uh, but man, Fire Emblem Three Houses is shaping up to be one hell of a sales explosion. And uh, I'm sure Switch sales are going to be going like this, especially once that new Switch comes out next month, that, you know, that advanced version that it comes in the red box or the Switch Lite. I, the Switch is blowing up this year. I wouldn't be surprised if we're at 50 plus million units sold uh, by the end of this fiscal year. I mean, maybe we'll be at 60. Maybe I'm underselling. I actually think Nintendo's projections for this year are, are under based on this lineup the rest of the year, but we'll have to wait and see. On Friday, when we didn't have a Prime News, and I'm sorry about that, I was spending all day editing the Nintendo Prime Podcast, which, hello, shout out to the Nintendo Prime Podcast, go check it out up here, seriously, uh, HMK was on, it was a great podcast, we have a new co-host, it's awesome, I put a lot of effort into it, I hope you enjoy. That being said, Doom, uh, Bethesda announced on Friday that Doom 1, 2, and 3 are coming to Switch, PlayStation 4, Xbox, PC, etc. It was a big shadow drop during QuakeCon, which kind of got leaked beforehand, but it got leaked the same day, so it's not too bad. Uh, and they're priced very respectably. One issue that like, propped up right away, especially with Doom 1 and 2 on Switch, is that it required a Bethesda.net login. That means that Doom 1 and 2, anyways, required you access the internet to play single player you know games that, that didn't make much sense and bethesda did tweet out in response it took them 24 hours because of course it did uh but it hit bethesda did tweet out in response that they are aware of it this was not supposed to be how it worked and they are working on a fix which i'm not sure if it's applied as of yet because i don't have the games if it is applied let me know down in the comments uh, but it's supposed to be a fix where it's only optional they only meant that login to be optional, not required to play. Uh, as for why would you want to log in, I guess they have rewards tied to the account if you log in with it and stuff like that. It's a reward system, kind of like the My Nintendo program, My Nintendo Rewards. So uh, there you go. It is uh, supposed to be optional. It will.
will be optional in the future. But that's not the end of the Doom news. Oh, no. Because Doom 64 was rated by the Peggy board for Peggy 16. And the big thing about that is Doom 64 was not actually announced at QuakeCon as coming out anytime soon. So this could be another Shadow Drop coming later this year. Uh, now, it's only listed for PC and PlayStation 4. However, that does not discount Switch, which would be weird since Doom 64 came out on the Nintendo 64. Hence the name. Uh, but what it is, is Doom 1 and 2 were both listed by the Peggy board uh, before the announcement last Friday as only being for PC and PlayStation 4, despite the fact that they had not come out, at least on PlayStation 4's front. Obviously, the old school original versions have been on PC for some time. And, well, they ended up coming to Switch and Xbox anyways. So chances are it's just the same thing here. It's rated initially because uh, the copy or version of the games they have are PC and PlayStation 4, but it's going to come out on Switch and Xbox as well. Again, no release date on this. It's just something that hit the Peggy board. It's likely coming with the success of Doom 1, 2, and 3. Obviously, we have Doom Eternal coming out here, uh, I think, in a couple months. Uh, it's, it's coming soon. So, yeah, uh, be pretty excited. If you love Doom, this is <laughs> truly the year of Doom. We're getting everything Doom in the same year. It's pretty crazy, and I, I couldn't be more excited. I grew up on Doom, man. Doom and Duke Nukem 64, that was my PC gaming childhood up until Age of Empires. So... Chris Neosi, or Neosi, I apologize if I butchered his name, has now been replaced by Zach Aguilar in Fire Emblem Three Houses and Fire Emblem Heroes uh, for voicing the character named Byleth. Now, the controversy surrounding this isn't something I want to dive too deep into. We did do a live stream about it and talked about it a bit. But uh, what, what you need to know here is that Chris was accused of sexual assault, mental abuse, uh, and also for breaking NDA with Nintendo and other companies. Now, uh, the proof for the NDA stuff seemed to come from a Discord server, and I know that stuff can be faked, but anything can be faked. Uh, but he, The big thing, the reason why I think Nintendo probably went forward with it is that Chris himself put out a post on his Tumblr uh, with a whole bunch of public apologies to all of the women that he sexually or mentally abused uh, and basically acknowledged that at least some of these allegations are true. He wasn't as sorry maybe as it felt like, as some felt like he should have been, but it, but beyond, it really doesn't matter. The point is he copped up to some of it. That means that uh, some of the allegations are true, and if some are true, then maybe all of them are true. And it does, at least to me, based on initial research, look like he did break NDA and revealing he was the voice of Byleth long before Nintendo had allowed voice actors to even talk about that with anyone. And it's not like he just told you know who he was dating. He was touting it on a Discord server, which is obviously much more public than just a private friend or family member that maybe you're telling, hey, look, I'm voicing this character. So... Uh, they have removed him. He has been replaced with Zach Aguilar. Uh, I have not seen an example of each voice clip side by side yet. I apologize. I've been really busy lately, so I'm not sure how it plays out. But maybe if I can find some side by side comparison clips, I'll throw it up. Otherwise, uh, you guys let me know if you like the new voice acting better than the old voice acting. Obviously, when it comes to voice acting, we want to support the people that uh, do it not only the best, but also do it uh, well as a as a human being I, i'm not saying that what your personal life is should necessarily affect your work life uh but if it is you using your personal life for or your work life for success in your personal life uh that is obviously something that is a big no-no uh in many uh you know groups out there and there are so many voice actors struggling to even find gigs that there's plenty of just good faith voice actors out there. And uh, Zach Aguilar looks like another one. Uh, the voice acting team for Three Houses is generally fantastic. I've, I've heard a lot of it through cutscenes, and who oh boy, did they do good. So, uh, hey, look, Nintendo does know how to do voice acting, right? Uh, they just got to hire the right people. And now uh, what's sad is that Chris actually voiced a character in Octopath Traveler, and I'm hoping that means in a sequel for that same character there, they use a different voice actor. I'm assuming that Chris's career is probably down in the dumps, uh, but hey, you know, when you cop to mentally abusing um, and sexually abusing women and uh, it looks like you're also breaking contract with the companies you're having contract with, I mean, you kind of brought it on yourself, man. And because I don't want to end on a negative note, I really hated that last story. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about Arlo. Yes, Arlo, that fun-loving blue puppet. Uh, hi, Arlo. How's, how's it going? Yeah, I know. Um, you're kind of a, a thing that haunts my nightmares. <laughs> uh, he actually put up a video recently talking about how Nintendo should remaster Paper Mario A Thousand Year Door. And, well, he put up a hashtag for it, hashtag remaster thousand year door, and it actually went trending in the United States on Twitter. 
crazy. There was at one point over like 18,000, 20,000 uh, tweets about it. It's kind of died down a little bit since then because, of course, trending's always changing like on the hour on Twitter. Uh, but it was really cool to see that happen. Obviously, uh, a lot of Paper Mario fans are not happy with the direction Paper Mario has taken since. Obviously, the Lash game and Color Splash didn't really impress uh, some people. Sticker Star wasn't what people wanted. They, people were really longing for basically what you know the first two games in the series did, particularly A Thousand Year Door. Uh, but uh, it's obviously not something that people have faith that Nintendo is able to recreate the magic for, so they would rather see a remake or a re I mean, I, rather. I think anyone would rather have a brand new Paper Mario game that can recapture that magic, but if we can't get that, we'd love to see A Thousand Year Door brought Back. Now, it shouldn't even be that hard of a remaster. You basically have to just kind of redo uh, all the polygons and stuff to make it able to go widescreen. And then in addition to that, put it in HD. That's pretty much all you need to do. And suddenly, A Thousand Year Door is now ready for a modern uh, audience. But I don't know. I think it's something Nintendo should be looking into. I hope they do. I think it would actually be the best-selling Paper Mario game since A Thousand Year Door. But what do I know? Um, I'm just glad that this is a thing that happened, that fans came together. There's a change.org petition. I guess I'll put that down in the description. Arlo even admits, yeah, change.org petitions don't really ever change anything. But, uh, hey, you know what? Um, it's better than doing nothing if you really want a remaster to happen. Heck, maybe we'll come up with our own remaster video. There's there's some Nintendo games I want to see come back that I think Nintendo should re revisit. Uh, if not now, at least in a remastered form. Man. I'm not going to say it, say what game I'm thinking of just yet. I might make that video in the future. All right. Anyways, thank you, Arlo, for that inspiration. Totally stealing that idea from you. I know. I mean, I, I don't know what to tell you. I, I'm stealing your idea. It's just happening. Anyways, I want to thank you guys for tuning in to Nintendo Prime. Be sure to check out our Patreon at patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime if you want to so show support for this show and in particular the Nintendo Prime podcast, which has been rebooted with episode 112. Again, go up and watch it. We're in that podcast merch. Let's go. You don't have to buy any merch. I don't really care if you buy merch. I care that you just tune in and enjoy the show. I know it was an hour and a half long, but man, was it a really good conversation. We talked Astral Chain, we talked Fire Emblem Three Houses, Switch Light. A conversation went on and on and on. A little bit on Breath of the wild too uh exciting stuff in that podcast i hope you tune into it otherwise you know what i'm gonna catch each and every single one of you people in the next video oh and hey you know i mean you could like you could subscribe you know you could share this video with your friends you could leave a comment down below like all of that is stuff that helps grow the channel grow the video Maybe someday one of these Prime News episodes will go trending on YouTube. Wouldn't that be something? Wouldn't that be something? Now, everyone says that this is like a Spawn Wave knockoff, right? They say I'm blue, that I'm a Spawn Wave knockoff, that I'm not as good, that I'm not funny. All I know is the Spawn Wave do this or that or jazzy.